Memphis and Nashville. Two of the biggest cities in the entire southeastern United States and the biggest two cities in Tennessee, you know, that state and these United States, about 212 miles apart or just over a three hour drive on Interstate 40. Both have a lot in common, but uh, yeah, differences too. We'll, we'll look at those later. First of all, both are known for more than anything, music. While Memphis has historically been known for the blues, it's also arguably where rock and roll began, and today continues to have a thriving music scene. While Nashville has historically been known for country and western music, today it's nicknamed Music City since it's a huge center of the music industry for all genres. Being somewhat close to each other, it may not surprise you that both have the same climate. Both have four distinct seasons with hot, extremely humid summers and generally cool winters. Although both can sometimes get pretty cold, especially in January, Memphis does get slightly hotter in the summer and Nashville gets slightly colder in the winter. Although Memphis gets more precipitation overall, both get more annual rainfall than most other major cities in the country. Both cities often get thunderstorms and can get tornadoes every once in a while. Both are too far from the Gulf of Mexico to get hurricanes, although remnants of hurricanes certainly can affect Memphis. Christianity is the biggest religion in both. The biggest group of Christians in both are Baptists. Both are ethnically diverse. The median age in both is nearly identical. As in most major American cities, residents in both lean to the left politically and tend to vote for the Democratic Party. In recent national elections, they've reliably been two blue dots in an otherwise red state. Both have similar commute times. Both have higher than average water quality, but lower than average air quality. Both have high crime compared to the rest of the country. That said, there's sadly way more crime in Memphis. We definitely felt safer walking around Nashville compared to Walking in Memphis According to Wallet Hub, Memphis is one of the least safe big cities in the country. Both have lots of murals and street art. The nightlife scenes in both are epic. Both have incredible barbecue scenes as well. That said, Memphis barbecue is so well known and unique that it's one of the four main regional styles of barbecue in the United States. Memphis style barbecue, as it's called, is mostly made with pork ribs and shoulders and slow cooked in a pit. The pit of despair. Nah, man. More like a pit of happiness. So how about differences? I mean, I'm sure you're sick of the similarities already. Well, first of all, there's the river difference. The Cumberland River goes through Nashville. Memphis is right next to the mighty Mississippi River. The most epic river and largest river by discharge in the country. By far, dude. Drink that, Ohio River. Anyway, Nashville is more hilly. Sure, Memphis has some hills closer to the river, but Nashville has hills all over. It's right near the start of the Highland Rim, a region of very hilly land in central Tennessee. Hill, yeah, Nashville has been around longer. Oh yeah, let's get into some history. Native Americans lived in the area of modern day Memphis and Nashville for thousands of years. At the time of European arrival, the area of both was sparsely settled. That said, the area of of modern day Nashville in particular was the hunting ground of many different tribes, including the Shawnee, Cherokee, and Chickasaw. The Chickasaw also lived near the area of present day Memphis, as well as the Choctaw. The first Europeans to check out what later became Memphis were the Spanish, led by the conquistador dude Hernando de Soto in the 1540s. The first Europeans to check out what later became Nashville were French, 
fur traders. In 1689, one such French fur trader, Martin Chartier, created a trading post near present-day Nashville. In 1710, Charles Charleville was in charge of creating another trading post at a natural sulfur in Saline Spring in what's today downtown Nashville. This salt lick, which the French later called French, French lick, lick, attracted animals, which then caused hunters to hang out there. Meanwhile, by this time, French explorers had also established a settlement in what would eventually become Memphis. The French built Fort Assumption in the area in 1739 in response to the Chickasaw Wars. Flash forward to 1779 and a dude named John Buchanan founded a settlement in modern day Nashville. And soon after that, another dude named James Robertson founded another one nearby. Yet another dude named Richard Henderson wanted to call that settlement Nashboro in honor of General Francis Nash, a hero of the American Revolution. The next year, John Donaldson, who had a daughter who later married President Andrew Jackson, by the way, led around 60 families to settle Nashboro. It wasn't until 1784 that the North Carolina legislature officially recognized it as a town. They called it Nashville. Oh, and uh, yeah, Tennessee was part of North Carolina back then. Anyway, it wasn't until 35 years later, on May 22nd, 1819, that a group of investors founded Memphis. One of those investors, Andrew Jackson. Jackson, along with the two other investors, John Overton and James Winchester, named the new settlement after the ancient capital city in Egypt. Memphis, Tennessee officially became a city in 1826. Believe it or not, Memphis was heavily planned before it was developed. In fact, here is the original plan, man. Over the next few decades, both cities quickly grew as centers for trading cotton. Memphis had the Mississippi River, man, so that was a huge advantage economically, and its population soared right past Nashville by the mid-1850s. That said, by that time, Nashville was now the capital of Tennessee. Oh. When the American Civil War broke out, Tennessee became the final state to join the Confederacy. Almost immediately after this, both Memphis and Nashville became huge targets of Union forces. By March 1862, Nashville had fallen to the Union. Memphis held on until a few months later, when at the Battle of Memphis on June 6, 1862, the Union won, and the city remained under Union control for the rest of the war. Well, except for that one raid by Nathan Bedford Forrest. Otherwise, Memphis soon became an important Union supply base and lots of refugees, including runaway slaves, poured into Nashville. After the Confederate Army of Tennessee tried to retake Nashville on December 15th, 1864, this led to the Battle of Nashville, which the Union decidedly won. After the Union won the war and the country re United, mobs of white residents of Memphis attacked and killed black residents of the city in what became known as the Memphis Massacre of 1866. For the next 100 years, there would be huge racial tension in both Memphis and Nashville, and both would be heavily segregated due to Jim Crow laws. From the 1880s to 1960s, African Americans were routinely treated as second-class citizens citizens and both often not being able to vote due to obstacles like poll taxes. Meanwhile, both cities continued to grow as major trade centers. Nashville led the South in iron production, and Memphis continued to dominate the cotton industry. In the 1870s, Memphis residents suffered through a series of yellow fever epidemics, which ultimately led to more than 2,000 people there dying from it. No other city in the country was hurt worse by yellow fever than 
in Memphis, and it caused more than half of the population to flee it. Still, by the end of the 1800s, Memphis recovered and had become not only the location of the world's biggest cotton market, but also the world's biggest hardwood lumber market. By World War I, Memphis had more than 30,000 more residents than Nashville. In 1916, Clarence Saunders opened the first self-service grocery store slash supermarket chain, Piggly Wiggly, in Memphis. That same year, a huge fire broke out in Nashville that destroyed 500 homes there. During World War II, the federal government invested way more into Memphis than Nashville. Partially due to this, by 1950, Memphis had nearly doubled the population of Nashville. During the 1950s and 1960s, both cities were centers of the civil rights movement. Only in recent years has the population of Nashville skyrocketed right past Memphis. Today, the Nashville Metro has about 700,000 more people than the Memphis Metro. That Memphis Metro, by the way, includes areas in both Arkansas and northeastern Mississippi. Probably due to all this extra people in Nashville, Nashville has way worse traffic. Eh, but the roads seem to be better there. Less potholes, you know. Major industries in Memphis include transportation and logistics, manufacturing, and education. Memphis continues to be a major shipping center in the country, with the third largest rail center and third busiest trucking corridor in the country. Memphis International Airport is the busiest cargo airport in North America. Education is also a major industry in Nashville, but tourism and healthcare are also quite big there. Nashville is also sometimes nicknamed the Athens of the South since so many major universities are located there. There's Vanderbilt, Belmont, Tennessee State, and Fisk, just to name a few. Two notable universities in Memphis are Rhodes College and, of course, the University of Memphis. Residents of Memphis tend to be more religious. Memphis has a higher poverty rate. And, yep, the median household income is is much higher in Nashville. That said, Nashville has a much higher cost of living. Not only that, it generally has higher taxes. Nashville has a higher percentage of residents who have a college degree. It also has more high school graduates. Nashville has more residents born in a foreign country. Memphis has a much larger African American population. In fact, more than 63% of its population identifies as such. And it's one of the largest majority black cities in the entire country. Nashville is home to the largest Kurdish population outside of the Middle East. There's even a little Kurdistan located there. Memphis has a higher population density. Related to this, Memphis is more walkable and bikeable. Memphis has Beale Street. Nashville has Lower Broadway. Beale Street is a big freaking deal in the history of blues music in particular. As early as the 1860s, African-American traveling musicians began performing there. By the early 1900s, it was a vibrant place filled with African-American owned clubs, restaurants, and stores where many say blues first took off as a genre. By the 1970s, Beale Street had been designated a historic landmark, but had still fallen on hard times. However, since then, it has become revitalized and attracts tourists from around the world. That said, Beale Street is much more chill and laid back and low-key compared to the Lower Broadway in Nashville. When we were there recently, it was quite crazy. There were bachelorette parties everywhere. It basically felt like an adult theme park. Honky-tonk after honky-tonk with bands playing live music. For decades, Lower Broadway has attracted country music fans from around the world. Near Lower Broadway is the legendary Ryman Auditorium, the former home of the Grand Ole Opry, a weekly live country music show that has been on the air for nearly 100 
years. Not only is it a National Historic Landmark, it's a Rock and Roll Hall of Fame landmark, baby, with some of the biggest names in music history performing here. One of those biggest names in music history who performed here? Johnny Cash. The Johnny Cash Museum, in fact, is just a couple blocks away from Ryman Auditorium. I highly recommend a visit here. Oh, and speaking of Johnny Cash, he has ties to both Memphis and Nashville. Memphis is where his music career began. He also lived in Nashville later in life and, of course, performed there many, many times. Memphis is home to Sun Studio, the recording studio where most say rock and roll began. Opened by Sam Phillips on January 3rd, 1950, it would eventually record names like Helen Wolf, B.B. King, Roscoe Gordon, Carl Perkins, Roy Orbison, and Jerry Lee Lewis. Oh, and Sun Studio is where Johnny Cash specifically got his start, and an obscure singer by the name of Elvis Presley. Okay, I joke. Yes, the king of rock and roll himself, Elvis, got his start in this building, which you can indeed tour today. This is probably one of the best tours I've ever been on in my entire life, by the way. Even though he wasn't originally from Memphis, Memphis is where Elvis became a household name. It was there where he moved into Graceland, a mansion which he and his family lived in for the rest of his life. And yep, it's a national historic landmark and a huge tourist attraction still today. That said, Nashville might just be the best city in the country for music lovers. Thousands of bands and tens of thousands of musicians live here and thrive here, despite the growing cost of living. Nashville is home of the Country Music Hall of Fame and the National Museum of African American Music. And in case you didn't realize it before, the Grand Ole Opry is is still going, just in another part of town, at the Grand Ole Opry House. It's probably Nashville's biggest attraction these days and the longest running radio show in American history. Oh yeah? Well, Memphis also has the Stax Museum of American Soul Music, located at the original spot of the legendary record label Stax Records and the Memphis Rock and Soul Museum. Dangness. And the Nashville Metro is home to the Hermitage, a 1,000-acre former plantation built by Andrew Jackson. He lived there for most of his life. Walking around there today feels like you're stepping back into time, to the 1840s. In fact, three American presidents have called Nashville home. Memphis is home to the National Civil Rights Museum, built on the site where Martin Luther King Jr. was tragically assassinated on April 4th, 1968. Yep, that's the actual hotel where it happened. They converted it to the museum. That wreath marks the approximate spot where Dr. King was standing when he got shot. Other notable attractions in Memphis include Shelby Farms Park, one of the biggest urban parks in the country, the Bell's Museum of Asian and Judaic Art, and the Peabody Memphis Hotel, where you can see the march of the famous Peabody ducks to their favorite fountain in the lobby to swim. Well, it's also the only fountain they get to swim in. Other notable attractions in Nashville include the Nashville Parthenon, Music Row, the Belmont Mansion, and the Tennessee State Museum. As I mentioned earlier, Nashville is the capital of Tennessee. It's where the Tennessee government meets and passes laws and stuff. The building they meet in is one of the oldest working state capitol buildings in the country, yo. Nashville has more major professional sports teams, while Memphis just has the Grizzlies of the NBA, Nashville has the Titans of the NFL, the Predators of the NHL, and Nashville SC of Major League Soccer. More big time celebrities call Nashville home. Each year, Memphis hosts the World Championship Barbecue Cooking Contest, the largest pork barbecue contest in the world. It also hosts the Bill Street Music Festival every spring. Every summer, Nashville hosts Live on the Green, a 
huge and free outdoor music festival that showcases up and coming musicians alongside well-known ones. And then of course, there's arguably country music's biggest festival, the Country Music Association Festival held in Nashville every June. Memphis has this cool trolley downtown, but hey, Nashville has this uh, tractor. Memphis has this extremely unique Bass Pro Shops inside of a giant pyramid. The pyramid actually used to be a sports and entertainment venue, but now it looks like this inside. Not only that, you can go to the top of it and holy crap, look at that view of the river and city. We even ate dinner up there. According to at least one source, the Memphis Pyramid at 32 stories tall is the 10th tallest pyramid in the world. But hey, you can get a great view of Nashville on the John Siegenthaler Pedestrian Bridge. It's one of the longest pedestrian bridges in the world. Nashville is known for its hot chicken. Memphis is known for its soul food. An Amtrak line goes through Memphis, but not Nashville, although that's possibly changing soon as a new line has been proposed to connect Nashville to Atlanta. Others have also called for a new line connecting Memphis and Nashville after that, but that's probably not going to happen, at least not anytime soon. Ah, maybe this is a good spot to end the video. You see, based on my research and after after visiting both cities recently, I've noticed that Nashville seems to be viewed as the city of Tennessee's future, and Memphis, well... Memphis seems to be more in the rearview mirror these days. I think that's crazy. Memphis is one of the most unique cities in the country, and it's a dang tragedy that folks are forgetting about its charm. So yeah, sure, Nashville is amazing, but don't sleep on Memphis too. It has a lot that Nashville doesn't, and the two cities definitely complement each other well. Which is better, Memphis or Nashville? Let me know by screaming out your window or via messenger pigeon or by commenting below. I suppose that's easier for you and I'm more likely to get the message. Also, my family and I actually shot a lot of the footage that you saw in this video when we visited both cities last spring. We had a grand old time. Thanks for watching.